So thank you guys for being so patient with me as I um, navigate between you all here on Instagram and my Facebook family. Oh my God, guys, listen. <laughs> I have been in such a beautiful space of healing and releasing and letting go and sharing my story. And I'm so excited to be able to do that. I'm so excited to have this opportunity and this space to really come out, come out, be seen, be heard, and really just speak my truth. How I had to break free and let go from a narcissistic, toxic relationship that really had me in a very bad space in my life. Emotionally and mentally, I was suffocating. I became a prisoner of their pain. And it was really um, a time of what well, I felt like I was just losing myself. And I was going down this deep, dark hole and I just could not seem to get out of it. Well, I did. I finally got to a place. I took a year journey of like a Queen Esther's cleansing session, a cleansing journey of healing and wellness where I really just allowed myself to begin to heal internally and to speak some truths and to acknowledge some truths and to really get to a place where I began to release myself and unwrap from their trauma and really find that balance and that healing and that wholeness. I had to cut soul ties. I had to really allow a cleansing to take place within my soul and in my spirit and release myself from the insanity of that narcissist. And I've been very open about sharing my story, my journey. And I'm thankful that, hi, oh, Jessica, hello, my niece, my niece is on. Yay, this is the first time she's been on. Thank you so much, darling, for joining me. I love you so much. Kiss my babies for me. Um, and so I want to welcome you inside. And again, my name is Nicole Bozeman. I am your thought leader and I'm your mindset transformationalist. And I'm also founder and creator of Crystals, Diamonds, and Pearls. And I'm going to jump right in. Facebook family, thank you for joining me. Can you please just let me know who you are and where you joining me from and, and are welcome. And as you are coming inside, would you please invite a friend? Would you tag somebody to come in to this live? And I really want to talk about this. So I was scrolling on my Facebook page, as I always do every once in a while, and um, I, I became friends with this beautiful soul. Her name is Tamira Jonelle, and I hope she hops on there and sees this. Well, she put a post up, and the post says this, if you use your past as an excuse to be masculine woman, you will attract feminine men that haven't dealt with past trauma. Oh my God, family. When I saw that post, it just took me like on this roller, emotional roller coaster ride of agreement. Watch this. Because most of the time I say you're on a roller coaster ride of instability, but this one was a roller coaster ride of agreement. It allowed me to to get a really um, different viewpoint on when you're in a relationship with a narcissist. How does it look? It looks just like that. I found myself and I discovered as I was going through my healing journey and my Queen Esther's cleansing journey of healing and wellness, as I was allowing myself to heal and release and let go and get those soul ties cut and really just stand in my authenticity and in my truth, acknowledging my emotions and, and um, honoring you know, how I felt and my feelings, um, I realized that there was a flip that had taken place within the dynamic of this narcissistic relationship. And oftentimes, this is exactly what happens. You'll find yourself as the woman. Now, before I say this, before I go any further, I want to acknowledge my LGBT family and friends and my loved ones. Listen, when I'm talking about this, I'm not referring to anything um, within that sphere or that umbrella of relationships. I'm not. Uh, or, or you know who you are. 
Um, because I want you to show up in your authentic truth, but I'm talking about energetically. And here's the truth. One thing I'm learning right now is that we both have this feminine and this masculine energy that's within us, both both men and women. Which is sometimes you'll say how a man is more sensitive to the, the more sensitive to a woman's needs and the more feminine, and they and they just kind of have this feeling and flow and energy of this femininity about them. Where you'll see some women who are more masculine, and oftentimes when a woman steps in her masculine energy um, and and flows in her masculinity, she's called a bee. She's the one who is working all the time, the CEO, the go-getter, just really in that space of just digging in and doing, 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 right? And producing. They're the providers and the protectors. And this is how you know, um, well, let me put it this way. This is when you hear comments like, well, we know who we're the parents and the family there. Right. When you feel like the woman is taking control. Right. It sounds like it. It, it kind of takes this image or this look like the woman is, taking, is in control of the relationship. Right. Hey, Katrina. Welcome, my love. And um, and so and also at the same time is that we have this feminine side. And it's in both male, male and female. But we're, we both carry this energy and this feeling and this vibe. But what I want to do is before I dip, delve into the feminine, masculine narcissist, uh, because I really want to address when, when you're dealing with feminine men because they have not dealt with their past pain and issue, um, a lot of times this shows up in toxic narcissistic relationships, right? So, but before I go there, I want us to understand this. When you're talking about femininity, you know, we as women, we have really for centuries, you know, dating back in ancient times. And I got some notes. If you see me looking off the side, because I'm kind of looking at my notes. But our femininity, our feminine energy, and our vibe, and who we are as women, we have been hunted, we have been attacked, as when we've been scrutinized, we are under, we're underestimated, we have been scandalized, and guess what guys, our femininity has been killed on many occasions in many ways. How does it look like? Because it looks like um, it looks like when we are told to get up out of our emotions, get up out. You're so emotional. You just uh, you just act like a female. That right there. Now, isn't it interesting that when we show our emotions, we are criticized for doing it. And we're, and we're told to get up out of your femininity. So then when we step into our masculinity and our masculine energy, we become the go-getters and the doers and the producers and the protectors and the providers. Then we're told we're too masculine. And then it's like, well, you act like you're the man now. You act like you're the man. You don't need me. You don't need me. When we have a level of independence, well, now our femininity has now been killed. And it's hunting, it's under attack, right? So there's this imbalance in our energy flow and our ability to be who we authentically are, which is why you're now hearing people, um, terms like standing in your authentic truth, get into your divine feminine, becoming a queen. That's what that means. When I talk about the Queen Esther's cleansing journey of healing and wellness, that's what that means is stepping into your femininity while still having that masculine ability to produce and protect without going all the way over to that side and then making the man feel like we're stripping them of their authority because that's not the case. There was an equal balance. 
women were forced into exile. I love a show. Um, I'm always about ancient Rome and, you know, kings and the King Henrys. And I watch shows like The White Queen and The Spanish Princess and Rain and things like that. Like that's R-E-I-G-N. I love that type of stuff. But what I noticed about then when you were talking about you know, King Henry VIII, Queen Elizabeth, and all of those individuals back in the 1500s and things like that. If you watch those shows, one thing that really stands out when it comes to the women in those, in those series and in that, that uh, time period is that they were, it was almost a mandate on them to produce male heirs. And when a woman had a child, it was always, you having a boy, you having a son, you having a son, you having a male, you having a male, we gotta have a male, we gotta have a male, we gotta have a male. And if they did not give, give the king a male or a son, of course they were saying it was for the lineage and to, you know, to um, pass down the crown and, you know, and, and, and the, the rule and reign over the kingdom, whether it's England, wherever they were. But the big thing was that they required the woman to produce a male heir. And when they did, the male became, it was, they were treated royally. They were treated much better. They were honored. They were esteemed high. But when you had a female, a daughter, that little girl was chastised in like, oh, mm. A girl. All right, we can have a, you can have a son now. We're gonna get pregnant again, and you're gonna have a son. Or I'm gonna find somebody to give me a male heir. And it has been like that for so long to the point that as women tried to step into their femininity, they were called witches, and they were hunted, and we were killed. Why is that story important? I'm saying that to say this. Now today, when we try as women to step in our femininity, we're told you're too emotional. Get out your emotions. Get over it. You're too sensitive. And it, it puts us in this place where we now feel like the only way that we can survive is to almost take on the energy and flow and the demeanor and attitude of a masculine and a male. Women fight in, in getting positions and ranks and in power in you know, corporate America, right? They always call them, oh, you just so hard. You know, you're just mean. You know, you're... You're tough. You got to act like a man to get what you want in this world today. You literally, they literally, society has taken our divine feminine flow, vibe, and energy, who we are, who we are made up of, and told us it is it is not worthy to be acknowledged. How dare you step into that? And then they get mad when we stand in that masculinity. Now, how does that relate to dealing with a feminine, feminine, masculine narcissist? Most narcissists, you will find and discover, really move in a feminine energy and flow. I know mine did. It was... They were so needy, right? I found myself feeling like the man in that relationship. I'm the one that got to, you know, you okay? You and now don't get don't get me wrong. There is a equal, there is a balance that that we have to discover within our relationships especially those intimate ones where you, you hear the man say, stop cutting off my balls. You taking away my masculinity and you don't make me, you know, you're taking away me feeling like a man. And so we'll say, you know, women step back, be gentle, be kind. Don't be so forceful. Don't make them feel like they can't 
you know, be the providers, be sensitive to that masculine side of a male. Now, why is that necessary? If the male is predominantly in a masculine state, and they've come up in that masculine energy. And that's how they were created. While we were created more with the feminine. We are the receivers. The males are the givers. Then where did that statement come from? And why is it necessary? It's almost a rule or a mandate to, to us women that we have to be mindful that we don't step on the toes of the masculinity of a male. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm all for it. But there's an imbalance there. And when you're dealing with narcissists and, and toxic relationships, you oftentimes will find yourselves as women in a masculine energy and flow, behavior. I felt like I had to... To, I, I just felt so masculine in that relationship. Like I could not find my feminine energy because they took it. And they annihilated in me by telling me I'm too emotional. Get out your emotions. You know, it ain't time for that. It ain't time for this. I need you to do da 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 And it was this control and manipulation of me. And in my emotional and mental space, that was killing and attacking, scrutinizing, and hunting down my feminine, my femininity. That's why so many today are, you know, you'll hear statements like step into your divine feminine. That's why. Because it was taken away from us. And and most narcissists, and I know mine's was, he was always in that feminine. It was always what they did to me. And oh my God, they did this. It was a boo-hoo crying, woe is me, energy and language on a consistent basis. Though at the same time, they wanted to stand in this masculine, this alpha male uh, space. And they tried to hold that space. But within that alpha male space, they remained in this feminine energy. And what was uncovered over the years of this toxic relationship was that they never healed from their past trauma. They felt like they needed to be protected instead of being the protector. They felt like they needed to be um, given and, and they were the receivers instead of being the giver. And I became the giver. And while there is, there is a balance between the two, in a relationship, we are, again, we're operating in both energies at any given time. When you're in that survival mode, you're in your masculine. When you're in that gentle mode of, of, of um, intimacy and compassion and passion, you're in your feminine side. Yeah. But a narcissist will stay in that feminine woe is me energy and space because they're looking to take from you your energy, which is what they do, which is why it transfers over to them. That's what that soul tie does. It makes, it takes the energy out of you and they suck it like a succubus into them and then they're moving in that space and they're demanding that you acknowledge them there and still acknowledge them as a man and then their male their masculinity which becomes hidden and compromised because in doing so you know and on the and, and let me pause here let me say this you know for 
for centuries, we have told men that they cannot show emotions. And that has been a big mistake. And to all of my kings that are watching this video, that will watch this video, that are on right now, I sincerely apologize for that. I apologize that society made it seem like you were not allowed, it was forbidden for you to acknowledge your emotional and mental space that you didn't have a right to, that if you did watch this, you would be like a girl. Oh my God, you act like a girl. Excuse me. Did you just attack and scrutinize my femininity? Like it's not valuable. And we have lived under that that flow, that mindset, that belief system for centuries. We were raised in it. We've been raising our kids in it. And there is a time where we have to allow and teach them how to balance the two. But if, if you don't know how, then you won't be able to show them how. And, and most narcissists are always in that feminine, feminine flow and energy in a negative way. Now, listen, don't get it twisted. We as queens, we are positive. We are powerful. We are empowered. We are givers. I mean, we're receivers. We receive. Great. We stand in our zone of genius. Being able to receive, which is why we take in so much negativity. We, we, we have the capacity, watch this, to do it. Because we are the receivers. It's just we've been receiving the wrong things. And we've been told that we had to, but we didn't have an option or choice in the matter. But I'm coming as a thought leader to tell you, yes, you do. You don't have to receive the negative energy, those, those the negativity, the toxicity. You don't. Feeling ashamed, feeling like you're abandoned, like you don't have a right to show emotions or be emotional. That you don't have the right to, to acknowledge how you're feeling, to express it. That we have to be quiet and summoned. We're not allowed to speak. We're not allowed to produce um, in a space of, of uh, wealth and abundance without permission. And then if we do it without permission, we're called too independent. You too much... You know, I, yeah, I know who, who, like, it has to transform this, this ideal or ideology that our femininity is a bad thing. It's for us. We're supposed to have it. They like it. When we're giving them the intimacy, the romance, and all of that. They hate it when it's time to deal with hurt, discomfort, dysfunction, chaos. That's when our feminine energy becomes depleted. And we have to go into survival mode. One thing I discovered in my relationship as I, now I'm breaking free from it and I can kind of ascend up high above it and kind of look at it again, is I realized that that narcissist stay in this feminine energy. When I tell you I felt like the dude in that relationship, I did. And I hated it. I hated it. That's not, yes. When it's time for me to take care of my family, to be the provider, yes, I, I'm allowed to tap into that, that masculine energy so that I can get the strength and the power that's related to it and connected to it 
and create and, and produce and manifest and thrive. Absolutely. But I like my femininity. I like being gentle and, and, and kind and compassion. I like being love. I like the organic flow of our feminine energy and the power that comes with that. And if you want to know what it really looks like, read the story of Queen Esther. She operated in her femininity when she was going before the king and when she would talk to him. She did so in that feminine, divine feminine space and her queenliness. When it came for her to protect her countrymen, she stood in her masculinity at that point and said, if I perish, I perish. But always remaining gentle, sweet, compassionate. There is nothing wrong with those things. We have been told that it's a sign of weakness. But let me remind you, family, that is strength. It is our superpower. And I want you to begin to take your power back. So when you're dealing with this narcissist that's standing in that femininity and standing in that, that feminine energy, it's nine times out of ten it's because you will always hear them complain about what somebody did to them. You'll hear them talk about things that happened 20 years ago. And when I was little, I got hurt. And this relationship 10 years ago hurt me. And they hurt me. And this happened. And, you know, I and, and I just got so hurt. And I just... But there was no healing from the hurt. You just stay in the space of hurt constantly consistently that's that's your point of reference for everything that happens in your life they hurt me and then when you have a female or the woman or the queen who steps in and tries to give you love you can't they can't receive it even the love hurts and there's there's some like and I hate to use this term, mama's boys, whining, complaining, always negative. Something's always wrong. It's everybody else's fault. They can't survive. They can't do things because this person did this and that person did this and this person said that and this happened over here and that happened over there. There was always an excuse for their lack of thriving in their lives. When my sister put that post up, oh my God. And again, I want to thank everybody that's joining me right now, but when my sister put that post up, it just hit me so hard because it it was a it was a confirmation to me of the type of energy that was flowing between me and this narcissist. And I am so happy to be able to let go and step out of all of that masculine energy. I was, it was draining me because I could not be in my femininity, which is who I am, who we're created to do, how we're created to be. That's how we're created to receive. It's just not about opening the ball legs, guys. It's not. It's so much more in our emotional, mental space, in our spiritual bodies. It's important that we are able to exude that femininity and not have it compromised or chastised or scrutinized unless I'm shaking my ass somewhere. And I got booty shorts on and butt implants and breast implants and lip injections and... All of that stuff. But when you're able to stand in your truth and your authenticity, there is a power that comes with our femininity. 
that brings grace and passion and compassion. It brings flexibility and patience. It allows us to be able to compromise. But again, when you're in that toxic relationship, all of that is buried, is contaminated, it's altered, is infiltrated by lust and greed, by anger, chaos, and dysfunction. And it causes us to go into a space of instability in our emotional and mental space. I don't want to be forced in exile because I love being feminine. And many of us have been forced into exile. And it's not fair. And it's time for us to step out of that exile space and say no more. I am taking my divine feminine energy back and I'm gonna stand in my queenliness, powerful and empowered. We're not standing there to be a hindrance to you masculine. We're standing there to be your support. Oh my God. But we have to be able to remove ourselves from those toxic relationships and those narcissistic relationships and, and learn how to take the wisdom of our past experiences and leave those wounds. Why would you get into your fifth and sixth decade of life and you're still carrying those wounds? You refuse to let them go. And that's what happened to narcissists. That's what they do. They'll hold on to that trauma. They'll wrap themselves up in the trauma. They'll use it like Linus's security blanket. They're, they, it will be the very thing that they need to survive is that trauma. And it keeps them in that space of negative femininity where they find themselves incapable of letting it go. Because remember, family, the feminine energy, we are receivers. And when a man in the masculine steps into that space and refuses to let that go, they continue to receive the hurt, the pain, the dysfunction of the, those tra that trauma. And they stay there. And they move in this trauma, dragging it along while they're blaming everybody else for. Listen, family, when I started this live, and I'm healing out loud, this is, this is me healing out loud and sharing my testimony because I want you all to know that you're not alone in this. You're not alone in, in feeling like, what the heck, like, why can't I be this feminine queen that stands in her power and her superpower of, of passion and and, you know, just who we are as that receiver. And then flip it and turn it and, and nurture it. And then bring it back matured and seasoned and powerful. And like, let's go, King. Let's do this. Without feeling intimidated by our feminine energy and our, and our superpower. I started this, this live sharing this post that, again, my friend Tamara Jonell posted this. And I give her a shout out. And I'm going to thank you for that because you really did confirm in me what I was sensing and what I've been working through and, 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 try, and unwrapping 
not off of me because it's off me, but I want to up, up, unwrap the the energy of it. That what is that? What was that that I was dealing with? I took and I started a a Queen Esther's cleansing journey of healing and wellness because I had prayed to God and I said to Him, Father, I ask that you remove every toxic person, entity, thing, situation, circumstance, experience out of my emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical body. Cut the soul ties of any connections that I have that is full of toxicity and poison. Because I desire to stand in my authentic truth and my queenliness as a thought leader, as a mindset transformationalist, as I create this safe space of healing and wellness for you. But I had to cleanse my vessel first. And I took this beautiful journey of healing and wellness. And while that was happening, I was beginning to be disconnected from that power source of toxicity. And in doing so, I can hear the whining and the crying. And I remember one time thinking like, dang, you sound like, and I did say, I was like, you really sound like a wounded female. Not against us as women, but it was his energy and his vibe. And I realized now that's what it was. And I realized that that's what I was hearing. It was the feminine side of him that stood and stayed in that place that capsulated him. He was held prisoner of his own pain and made me prisoner of the pain as well. Wrapped me up in his trauma of dysfunction and chaos and hurt. And I began to suffocate. And so I felt like I had to get into survival mode. Well, oftentimes when we as women go into survival mode, guess what? We take on this, this masculine feel and mindset. We got to get strategic and, and, and very, you know, planning and just real. But that's what they tell men to do, right? That's how men become successful. They get into that masculine forceful, like, mm -hmm space. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's important that we're able to balance both of those in us. But when one is more dominant than the other, that becomes the problem. That's where the problem comes in. And his feminine was way, way, it was like 90-10. And I was 80-20 masculine. And I remember just crying my eyeballs out. And I remember one time I was journaling, I was like, God, I hate feeling like this. Like, I don't feel like I can just be a woman. I want to feel like a prince, princess. I want to feel like a queen. I'm, you know, not that I'm looking for somebody to just take care of me and just, you know. But yeah, in my emotional, mental space, like I can be gentle with myself. And feel safe in doing it. And not have my emotions and my thoughts become a weapon of mass destruction against me. Which is what narcissists and toxic people will do. They'll gaslight you. That's what gaslighting is. They'll flip it. And they'll make your, your concerns and your emotions and your, your thoughts and your feelings... They'll use it as a weapon of warfare. And they'll take it and they'll, they'll, they'll load up their shotgun and go... Psh! Pow, 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 and shoot you with it. And then guess what we do? I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry you feel that way. We begin to apologize for our emotional space. No more, family. It's time to, to begin to, to release yourself from those toxic relationships and those narcissists. And I don't care who they are in your life. Whether it's your, it could be your mate, it could be your, your kids, it could be your parents, it could be your, your, your siblings, it could be your co-workers. This is across the board. It's not always just with intimate relationships, but all relationships. We don't have just intimate relations, family. You do have a relationship with your co-workers. 
You do have a relationship with your neighbors, your friends, your other family members, your pretend cousins. Just, you do. You have those other relationships. But yes, with the pastors, mm -hmm. with the church, people. Because I'm not, see, this is the thing I, 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 I always say is it's not the church. The church is the building. It's the people in the church. And when you, and I'm going to put this plug in, when you join me this Thursday, because I am hosting a Queen Esther's cleansing session. It's a journey to healing and wellness. We're going to talk about that. Because I want to show you how to, to allow yourself to remove those labels and titles off of them and look at the soul of the man. They can sit there and say, I'm pastor so-and-so, I'm prophet this, I'm evangelist this, I'm reverend this, I'm elder that, I'm da 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 and be wicked and a narcissist. Yeah, I said it. And I know it to be true because I experienced it in my own life. That's part of my testimony, family. You're going to, I'm going to share that with you this Thursday at 2 p.m. when you join me for the Queen Esther's cleansing session that I'm hosting. It's going to be so important to come in because, and realize that. And I appreciate you saying that, sis, because it's the truth. We have to begin to learn how to balance out our feminine and masculine energy within us. And it's okay to have both. Matter of fact, we do have both. Which is why you'll find some men that are more, that just are more, this is the term they use, in tune with their emotions. Isn't that interesting? But when we get in tune with our emotions, we're told to get out of them. Now, how is that possible? Interesting, right? So listen. Before I close and before I go, I just want you to know that, and thank you whoever's giving those hearts, those loves. Oh my God, I love you. Thank you so much. Um, I want you all to understand that this is real. It's, it's a real encounter. And I guarantee you, when you get off this live, if you take a moment to just kind of think about and just sit with it for a second, and allow your emotions to come up and for you to acknowledge those emotions. When, it, when you're thinking about certain situations and certain relationships and just be gentle with yourself, but allow yourself to be honest with you. You're going to discover like, man, when you're fighting, 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 fighting all the time. That is you standing in your masculinity when you just want to not fight anymore. Like, can we just, can we all just get along? Can we just, can we not have this warfare constantly in our emotional and mental space against each other? And that happens and you'll always find yourself in that space when you're dealing with those narcissists and when you're in those toxic relationships. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. <laughs> it is so important. And I wanted to share my Healing Out Loud session with you because again, my sister Tamara Jonelle, and I'm going to read this post again. And I hope that she sees this. But she said, if you if you use your past as an excuse to be masculine woman, you will attract feminine men that haven't dealt with past trauma. And that is 1 billion percent correct. It is accurate. It is my testimony. And that's exactly who I was dealing with. And I didn't even want to be in my masculinity. I, I, I use it when I have to as parents and you know, as moms. We do have that moment where we step in that space. But we want to be feminine. We want to be gentle. We want to be nurtured. We want to be just, mm. This is why little girls and their fathers, 
We want that feeling of safety and protection and belonging without making us feel like we just got to be willing to let me get to. Now, I'm not in that whole, like, you're so feminine, you just can't do anything. Like, come on. <laughs> you know, like, have your balance. Stand in your superpower of your queenliness. And let's begin to take our power back. And let those narcissists go. It is going to be a healing process when you release yourself from those toxic relationships and those narcissists of redefining and reconnecting with your divine feminine and the femininity that's you. That's how we were created. Not being ashamed to be the receiver and the giver. And the same for the man. And for my brothers that may be watching this. You are receivers. You are givers by nature. That's how you were created to give. But it's okay to receive too. It's okay. It's okay to have that balance. And it's time that we learn how to, to have that. And how to organically and maturely move between the two. So that we're not surviving in our relationships. But we're thriving in them. Are you ready to have that experience? And so again, I just want to invite you guys to join me this Thursday. This is my little plug and my little invitation as I close this down. Join me this Thursday at 2 p.m. on my Facebook page of Crystals, Diamonds, and Pearls for the Queen Esther's cleansing session. It is a journey to healing and wellness. Where we're going to begin to unwrap ourselves from the trauma and stand in our queenliness, our superpower of passion, purpose, and in our destiny. Are you ready to have that experience? Join me, family. There's no registration required. It is free. All you ask, all I ask that you do is you come over into my Crystal's Diamonds Reports Facebook page. Come into the event, which is tagged up in my post. And on my page, both my um, personal page and in my coaching page. It's in my Instagram. It's in the bio. If you look at that link in the bio, it'll say Queen Esther's Cleansing Session. That's that. That's the event. And it's going to be this Thursday, the 22nd at 2 p.m. We're going live in Zoom. I have the link up there. And you can come on in and you can join me. But it is time, family, to release this and, and re- define and transform our divine feminine and our divine masculine and put it back in its proper place and balance so that we can operate in our truth and in our authenticity and not feel like being a feminine means that we have to be weak. Yes, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for that, my love. <laughs> 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. I mean, Eastern Standard Time. Um, so yes, so, so please join me then. And again, we're going to talk about balancing our femininity, our feminine and masculine energy, and really getting that, that balance there and understanding how to move so that again, we're not just surviving. We are thriving in all of our relationships. And then we're also going to get our superpower back to take back our power from those narcissists and all of those toxic relationships. That, keep, that make us feel like being feminine is a bad thing and it's a curse because it's not. Are you ready to do that? Guys, I love you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you for jumping into your safe space. Once again, if you're on my Instagram page, please go to the link in my bio, uh, Queen Esther's Cleansing Session link and just click the link. Come on, it'll take you right over to my Facebook page. And just hit like, share, love, and invite a friend to join in with you. And let me know that you're coming. Just tell me, yes, I will be there. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see you all. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Thank you for all of your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to heal out loud with you. 
Know that I love you guys so very much. Have a beautiful rest of your Tuesday. And we're going to chat again real soon. Bye, guys.